Good morning, students. In today's class, I am going to discuss with you the new topic or second topic of first PUC science, that is biological classification. First of all, we discuss the definition of classification or what is the meaning of classification. Classification is the arrangement of organisms in convenient categories based on some observable characters. So we are classifying the organisms into many groups or many categories. So for this differentiation, categorization, we are following certain characters observed in the organisms. I will write the definition of classification. It's a arrangement of classification is the arrangement of organisms into into convenient category categories. based on based on observable character observable characters so this is the definition definition of classification now let us discuss about the how classification is started and progress we will start with the first aristotle classification Aristotle's classification. Based on some very simple characters, Aristotle classified whole organisms into two groups. He divided all the organisms into two groups. One group is plants, another group is for animals. He made two groups. One group is for plants, another group for the animals. These plants further divided into three categories. These are further divided into three categories. They are trees, shrubs and herbs. And this categorization is based on the size of the plants. The hues Plants are considered as a trees and woody middle sized plants are considered as a shrubs and very delicate tender stem containing plants are considered as a herbs. So plants were again classified into three groups, trees, shrubs and herbs. In the same way animals are also classified into two groups. Two groups. So one is with red blood with red blood and another group is without without red blood animals are further classified into two groups one group of animals which are red blood and another group of animals which have no red blood so this was a very simple classification made by Aristotle. The next classification was made by the Carolus Linnaeus. Next one is Carolus Linnaeus classification or Linnaeus classification. Carolus Linnaeus also made two kingdoms or two groups of organisms and these organisms are divided into two kingdoms. So Linnaeus made the two kingdoms, all the organisms have divided into two kingdoms. One is kingdom plantae and another one is kingdom animalia. This is the first a simple scientific method 
based classification. So here this classification has two kingdom. That's why this case classification is called the two kingdom classification. This one is called the two kingdom classification. The whole organisms have divided into two kingdoms. One is kingdom plant and another one is kingdom animalia. And the, what are the criteria or the characters he observed for this classification? He made the kingdom plant and to those organisms which are autotrophs. Which are autotrophs. For autotrophs he made the kingdom Plantae and organisms which are heterotrophs. Heterotrophs for them he made the kingdom animalia. So meaning of heterotrophs means those which prepare their own food. They are not depending any other organisms for their food. They can synthesize their own food by photosynthesis. And such organisms are called the Autotrophs and all the autotrophs were pl placed in the kingdom plant. And heterotrophs are those which are not preparing their own food and they are depending on another organisms like plants to get their food and such organisms are placed in the, the group heterotrophs and all the heterotrophs are come under the kingdom animalia. But this was a very simple classification, but it was not satisfactory because this classification has many drawbacks or limitations. What are those drawbacks? Drawbacks of this lineage classification. Drawbacks or limitations of lineage classification. Lineage classification did not distinguish prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The first point is did not distinguish prokaryotes and eukaryotes and eukaryotes. Second drawback was did not distinguish unicellular and multicellular. This classification had no idea about unicellular and multicellular. And third class, third drawback was did not distinguish photosynthetic and non photosynthetic photosynthetic and non photosynthetic so apart from this there was one more driver drawback that was there were so, so many species which were not placed any of this kingdom they were separately kept away from this two kingdom so that's why because of all these drawbacks, this one is not followed. And third kingdom came next by the, explained by the next scientist, Hackel. Along with Linear two kingdoms, Hackel introduced one more kingdom. And name of that kingdom is Kingdom Protista. Along with earlier two kingdoms, Kingdom Plantae and Kingdom Animalia. So here all organisms have divided into three kingdom system. That's why this system of classification was called as three kingdom, three 
किंगडम क्लासिफिकेशन प्री किंगडम क्लासिफिकेशन एंड इट इज मेड बाय हैटम हियर हैटल सेपरेटेड ऑल द इनिसेलर ऑर्गेनिजम्स फ्रॉम किंगडम प्लांटे एंड किंगडम एनिमलिया he placed all the unicellular organisms in kingdom protista and all the plants in this group plantae and all the animals in kingdom animalia the next kingdom next or fourth kingdom was introduced by the the next person coplant Coplan introduced one more kingdom, and name of that kingdom is kingdom Monera. Kingdom Monera. So along with Protista, Plantae, and Animalia. So there are four kingdoms, and this system of classification is called as Four kingdom classification. This is called the four kingdom classification, and it was made by the Copland. So kingdom Monera was introduced by the Copland. Copland separated all the unicellular into two groups. So all the prokaryotic unicellular organisms. a place in this kingdom monera and all the unicellular eukaryotic organisms were placed in the kingdom protista for all the unicellular in 30 three kingdom system there was only one kingdom that was kingdom protista but copland divided All the unicellular into two kingdom. In one kingdom, he placed all the prokaryotic organisms, and in second kingdom of Protista, he placed all the eukaryotic unicellular organisms. Eukaryotic unicellular, and remaining to have the all the autotrophs and heterotrophs. So like this, four kingdom. classification as introduced by the copla but the fungi were not introduced any of this kingdom and that's why another scientist r h whitaker r h whitaker who introduced a new kingdom and the name of the kingdom is kingdom fungi or mycota kingdom fungi or mycota in which kingdom all the fungi have placed and along with this four kingdom and this new kingdom together we call the five kingdom system five kingdom system so this five kingdom system discovered by the scientist r h whitaker so all the five kingdoms i am going to write one more time there are five kingdom classification we are still today we are following this five kingdom class or five kingdom classification only what are those five kingdoms five kingdoms first one is kingdom monera next one is protista fungi plantae and and monera has all prokaryotes protista has all unicellular eukaryotes
you carriers are placed in the protista and fungi the group made for saprophytes all the saprophytes were placed in the fungi and autotrophs placed in the kingdom plantae and heterotrophs placed in the animal and this five kingdom system was discovered by the R.H. Whitaker. So the, still today we are following this R.H. Whitaker's five kingdom system because this is more relevant and it is based on natural features or characters and it has it has following certain criteria. What are those criteria? Let us see. R.H. Whitaker followed certain criteria for his classification. We used to call criteria followed by R.H. Whitaker while classifying five kingdom system. The first one is cellular structure. Cellular structure. We observe cellular structure of the organisms whether organisms are prokaryotes or eukaryotes. Eukaryotes. Second criteria is thallus organization. Thallus organization. Whether it is differentiated or undifferentiated. differentiated or undifferentiated. This is the second criteria followed by the R.H. Whitaker. Third one is reproduction. Whether organisms are reproducing asexually or sexually. Or sexually or sexually. Now four characters mode of nutrition. Mode of nutrition. Whether the organisms are autotrophs or heterotrophs. These features were considered by classifying this five kingdom system. Along with this, there are two more criteria. Next one is phylogenetic relation. Phylogenetic relation means history of evolution. Evolutionary history. And also ecological importance. Ecological importance. Means whether organisms are producers, consumers or decomposers. So all these factors were considered while classifying the five kingdom system of classification. That's why it's considered a more relevant the type of classification. So we are following this five kingdom system.